tree, the Greeks who have this tool, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what fire they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it to my, into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Divine Mercy Sunday. 
to see the different ways in which that grace continually goes out to people. The way in which Christ lifts people up in such a profound way. I happen to uh, go back to John Paul II's house back in the year 2001. Because that was such an important day. He's the one that declared this uh, second Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday. I'd like to read part of this town for today. Because it was after that, a year after that canonization of St. Faustina, who was the one who had admirations of Jesus, that uh, Paul, uh, Paul, John Paul II was then inspired to uh, have this Divine Mercy Sunday. He said in his comment, he focused on that first sentence from the book of Revelations. You ever notice that book of Revelations? During the Easter season, for the rest of this Easter season, we will be reading from the book of Revelation. It's the last book in the Bible. That should tell us right there that there's so much words to that book. Of course, it's very liturgical. And he picked out that sentence from our reading today. Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I die. And behold, I am alive forevermore. As we heard these words of Paul said, those comforting words in the second reading, they invited us to turn our gaze to Christ, to experience his reassuring presence to each person, whatever his condition, even if it were the most complicated and dramatic. The word is a one repeats, fear not. I died on the cross, but now I am alive forevermore. I am the first and the last and the living one. That Alpha and the Omega, the first, that is, the source of every being, and the first fruits of the new creation. The last, the divinity and of history, the living one, the inexhaustible source of life that triumphed over death forever. In the Messiah crucified and risen, we recognize the features of the Lamb sacrificed on Malta, who implores forgiveness for his torturers and opens the gates of heaven to repentant sinners. We glimpse the face of that immortal king who now has the keys of death and Hades. Think about all the different things that go on in our world. How much healing needs to take place, as the Holy Father said. Jesus was on Yahweh. And he even on all the things he forgave the repentant sinner, didn't he? It's never too late to repent. He says the first step is the source of every being and the first fruits of the new creation, the last. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm repeating now. He goes on to say, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. The Pope encourages us to make our own and the psalmist ex exclamation that we just sang in our responsorial song. The Lord's mercy endures forever. To understand thoroughly the truth of these words, let us be led by the liturgy to the hardly event of salvation, which unites Christ's death and resurrection with our own lives and with the world's history. This miracle of mercy has radically changed humanity's destiny. It is a miracle in which is unfolded the fullness of the love of the Father, who for our redemption does not even draw back before the sacrifice of his own begotten Son. In the humiliated and suffering Christ, believers and non believers can admire a surprising solidarity 
which binds him to our human condition beyond all, all imaginable measure. The cross, even after the resurrection, the Son of God speaks and never ceases to speak of God the Father, who is absolutely faithful to his eternal love for man. Believing in this love means believing in mercy. Believing in mercy. Every time we come to Mass, notice he spoke about the liturgy. Every time we come to Mass, every time we enter into the sacraments, we're entering into that mercy of Christ. To see the way in which that mercy is flowing out to so many different people, whether it be from the side of the blood and water, or even from the sacrament of reconciliation. To recognize those wounds that Christ bore for sin. So that we could have that relationship with Him and that mercy that He wishes to give each and every one of us. So let us thank the Lord for His love, which is stronger than death and sin. It is revealed and put into practice as mercy in our daily lives. And prompts every person in turn to have mercy. Towards that crucified one is not loving God and loving his world's neighbor and one's enemies after Jesus' example. The program of life of every baptized person and of the whole world. Those words which were spoken over 20 years ago now declare the saint of the church. Then the Pope had declared this day of divine mercy Sunday at the canonization of St. Faustina. That was in the year 2000, the great Jubilee year. And on that very day of that declaration for mercy, the then to be St. John Paul II said, it was the happiest day of his life. That message of mercy and love of our Lord was not just a message for I said, and for the people of that time of our great war. It is a message for all of humanity. The Pope has said that through Faustina, the message which she brought is the appropriate, appropriate and incisive answer that God wanted to offer to the questions and expectations of human beings in our time, marked by terrible tragedies. And he quoted what Jesus had said to Sister Faustina. Humanity will never find peace until it turns with trust to divine mercy. What a great gift that mercy is in the way in which Christ pours that out mercy all to us. But we have to seek that mercy. Draw the understanding of the richness of that mercy. That understanding of that love that he has for some of that was done as we went through the Lent season, isn't it? Wasn't it? But it's also carried out through this Easter season, where we recognize the way in which it is to flow into our lives and flow out of other people. To bring in that richness of peace and joy that only God can give us because we choose to enter into that great gift of His life in our lives. <coughs> to seek his mercy. <laughs> Let's rise and offer our prayers.
Dear brothers and sisters, let us invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for this child who is about to receive the grace of baptism and for his parents and godparents and for all the baptized. We pray that this child will be given new ground on birth and baptism and a reawakening divine mystery of your divine resurrection and join them in your holy church. So we pray for bishops and priests. May God continue to bless their ministry as they bring the sacraments to all of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all nations and peoples, may they experience God's merciful love and have a conversion of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to the violence in Ukraine, may God's peace and spirit of reconciliation prevail. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear For those who feel they cannot be forgiven, may Jesus envelop them in his merciful love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear For those who have received the Easter sacraments and those who will receive them uh, at First Communion next Sunday, may they encounter Christ and then every member of our, their community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our military, first responders, and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our faith community, may the Holy Spirit continue to uphold and strengthen us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are died mark of the sign of faith, May the Lord bring them into the joy of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For Phyllis Springer, whom we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of course, we pray for all those who are suffering uh, through our community and those that are in the hospital, especially did, and continue to keep him in our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord.
view that uh, open us up because of this thing of original sin and it opens us up, up to God's graces and the gift of baptism and of course being in that song that holy river. Who sent your son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the evil spirit, and bring the human race resting from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your life? We humbly beseech you to free this child from original sin, to make her the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This is actually the first time that these oils are being used, or this oil is being used. This will bless that prison house. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us, dear brothers and sisters, pray that the Lord Almighty may bestow a new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. We will bless the water and the The Holy Mother Fox is already dead. Uh, blessed with the uh, fullness of the Holy Spirit. Who by the invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water in your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power of the sanctifier. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood of shadow of the generation, so that from the very the mystery of the one and same element of water would come an end to life and the beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass by shot through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would be to be the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with the blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water, received by the Holy Spirit, the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism, from all the slaughter of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down to your Son in the fullness of his body, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism and death. <laughs> And rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now we will have a confession of faith. So, dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the child you are presenting is about to receive from the love of God new life by the water of the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring her up in the faith, so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin, and may grow in her day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mind of your own baptism, renounce sin, and profess the faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which this child is to be baptized. Back together. 
Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all of his works? I do. And all of his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. smell really good for you. People want to smell your head now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, giving you new birth by the water of the Holy Spirit, and joining you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, so that you may remain as a member of Christ, priest of God and King, until eternal life. May this white garment be assigned to you of your Christian dignity, with your friends and family to help you, by word and example, bring the unseen into eternal life. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept running brightly so that your child, the mighty of Christ, may walk always as a child of the body. And persevering in the faith, may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly Lord. <laughs> now we have the epithet. That epithet just simply needs to be open. We remember the story about Jesus who opened up a uh, blind man and the dead man's ears, and he's coming to say his feet and sweet ears. Here, so let's see what we can hear. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf ear and moved you to speak, grant you that you may soon receive his word with your ears and profess faith with your ear lips to the glory and praise of God.
ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the newest member of your class, Harley Rose. Uh, let us sing together Alleluia number one on the 507. <laughs> Thank you. 
which but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you through the divine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let's us Therefore, Lord, we pray. 
program. Gracious the acceptance of wish of our service, that of your family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counter from the flock of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and prove this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He took part in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, he, O God, is Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Eat this, all of you, and the enemy, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when his offer was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In memory of me.
Thank God, O Lord, we pray. In all of this we give Christ a place of refreshment, right, and peace. Bless also your servants and those sinners. Open your love and mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agatha, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And bid us, we beseech you, into their company, not waiting our hands, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, who sanctify them. Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Send you forth with the prayers as you bring all your prayers. Share God's word, bring comfort and encouragement to those who need minister. Go forth with the blessing of God and the support of the members of our parish. Go in peace. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Pastor Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. We've got a few announcements on the short. 
Uh, at the very end, we ask you to for after I get done with the announcements, we'll be saying the prayers for uh, plenary intelligence for divine mercy. Those of you that may not know what plenary intelligence is, it's, it's a removal of all the temporal sins and stuff that we have in our lives. In other words, if you want to go to communion, receive communion, go to confession within a lot of long time, I think it's 20 days, I hear different things. Uh, and uh, have a participation in uh, prayers for that uh, uh, devotion to receive a plenary indulgence. All are invited to the Divine Mercy Sunday, which will take place this Sunday at 3 p.m. here at Utility. Uh, the funeral mass for Tom Hagee will take place this Tuesday uh, at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. The funeral service for Lois Kentner, who recently passed away, will take place in May sometime. Those rights will still be made. Please keep our first communicants in your prayers as if they be prepared to receive the Eucharist message at next week as Mass. And script is available in the back of the church, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, I don't know if people are aware the boiler for the school is the one that has on its way out. And so we'll have to replace the boiler in order to, to keep things going, but no or uh, we'll be through until the end of the uh, school year. And then a new one will be put in there. Uh, it's going to be about $75,000 for that boiler to be in place. Uh, you can help out in any way in that way. And have a great week, everybody. Let's say the prayers for your friends. So good to see you. We will recite the God of the Creed and a prayer to the merciful of Jesus. Our Father, And we have a special blessing for the mother.
first of mother. <laughs> the Lord God Almighty, through his son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as the hope of eternal life shines forth upon her children. May he graciously bless the mother of this child, so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her child, she may always remain united with her in thanksgiving. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now for the Father. May the Lord our Almighty, the giver of life, both in heaven and earth, bless the Father of this child, so that together with his wife, he may be, by word and example, proved to be the first witnesses of the faith of their child. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now for our May the Lord God Almighty, who by the water and the Holy Spirit has given us new birth to eternal life, abundantly bless his faithful, your present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people, and may he bestow his peace on all who are here. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. And as we go forth, let us sing together, Alleluia, Love is Alive, on that number 160. Thank <laughs> you.